I'm sorry, I know that's awkward for audiences because there's that point where you've been clapping for like 45 seconds and you're kind of like, is he taking a fucking piss or what? No, I'm sorry, it's good to be down at your level. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm lower than your level. Fucking hell, don't start throwing things at me, will you? Or, you know, don't slap me because you don't approve of the job I'm doing or anything. Oh, Dutch come, oh, my life. They might just died on me. <laughs> just like my grandpa. Anyway, um, sorry, that wasn't planned. <laughs> None of this is planned, I'm an idiot. Hello, my name, my, my name is John Porter. Hi. I have cerebral palsy. This isn't like an Alcoholics Anonymous thing. I just have to address it at the start. In the same way that if I came unarmed, you'd be going, what the fuck's he doing with that? You know, it's kind of something that I have to address. And generally, it's all right. It was interesting, actually. Uh, I did a fundraiser last week. I was actually uh, performing at a fundraiser as opposed to being the subject of one, which is usually what happens. <laughs> I have to get some money from somewhere now the government will stop my benefits. So there you are. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go, I toss a wank, because what, what, what can you do? Um, so yeah, I have cerebral palsy. Um, you can think what you like about that, I don't really give a fuck, you don't have to live with it. Um, <laughs> so, I talk about it on stage quite a bit. I didn't used to talk about it, I used to just address that I was disabled. I didn't used to say what I had. And uh, the first time I uh, started doing disabled material, somebody said to me, disabled material? I'm not sure that works, I'll think about that. Um, Guy came up to me afterwards and he said, oh, do you mind if I ask you what your disability is? And I said, oh, it's cerebral palsy. And he said, oh, that's not so bad. Uh. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, Dr. Shipman. Sorry, my uh, <laughs> chronic fucking illness isn't good enough for you, you bellend. Um, open mic comics, wankers, tell you. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, this is kind of that, but yeah, it's just one of those things, you kind of deal with it. I'll clear up some misconceptions about disabled comedians that you might not be aware of. Uh, no, we don't all know each other. <laughs> that seems to be a fairly common thing, I don't understand why there isn't a club for disabled people. I mean, if there was, where the fuck would we all park outside, anyway? <laughs> That's my favourite joke, it's all downhill from here, fucking hell. Yeah, downhill's easier for me though, so we're alright, aren't we? <laughs> I do talk about my disability a lot, I'm aware of that, but it, it's part of me, you know. I get some sooty comments every now and then, usually some white male comic on too much cocaine who pins me in the corner, starts telling me I shouldn't do too much about my disability. All right then, well, when you stop doing 30 minutes on wanking and being single, I'll stop talking about my disability. <laughs> How about that, you fucking prick? Um, <laughs> Tony's clapping at the back, because that's what his agent's like, his ex-agent was like. Um, <laughs> Oh shit, this is on film. <laughs> it's alright, you were never gonna fucking sign me anyway, were you? Um, I can't wait to put this on Facebook. <laughs> you won't see it, I deleted about 150 comedians during lockdown. Best day of my fucking life. Um, I, this wasn't planned, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Man kills comedy career on YouTube. <laughs> In the words of CM Punk, I'm breaking the fourth wall. Um, oh, fucking hell, a CM Punk joke lad did. Oh, I am truly at home tonight. Look at this. Yeah, I talk about my disability a lot, and then sometimes I rip my career on video. But yeah, I, um, I talk about my disability a lot because it's, it's part of me and I like it. And to be honest, like, if I didn't do that, I would actually be the white comedian who spends 30 minutes talking about being single and wanking. So there you go. You know, when I think about it, I need a hook. Not literally, my hands are fine, but, um... <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but right now, I'm enjoying this. Live at the moment, that's what I say. I almost died in a disabled toilet as well. Like, you think of all people, I would know how to use a disabled bog, wouldn't you? But no. Start leaning on them things that go flying forwards and backwards. I feel like a middle-aged recruitment consultant on a fucking peloton. <laughs> I only wrote that in the box. That's brilliant, isn't it? I'm going to be used to that again. <laughs> I'm sorry if there are any recruitment consultants in. Not really. I don't, I don't think it's your type of gig, though. I didn't, I didn't see anyone shooting up at the box, so I think we're all right. Um, God, I was supposed to give you content warnings, Johnny, and I said to you, I don't even know what that's going to be, so I don't know if I can help you. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I do talk about it a lot, and sometimes you get uh, interesting reviews. I saw a review of me recently that said, uh, John Porter disabled heavy set, and I thought, is that a review or a fucking description? <laughs> I'm 
I'm glad you like that one. <laughs> now, I've been doing comedy for a while. Um, how much longer I'll be doing it for is anyone's guess, but um, I've been doing comedy for a while and it's, it's gone all right. You know, I've had some really good nights. I'm, I'm a bit nervous about this whole attacking comedian trend that seems to have started. I think I'm going to have to invest in a motorised chair, to be honest with you. But... <laughs> I mean, to be honest, when, when, when audiences turn on me, it can go quite badly. I mean, uh, there was a gig I did once in Wigan where they started throwing things at me. And to be honest, it just became the world's saddest game of Space Invaders, because all I could do was move side to side, so... <laughs> Never mind, it's only fucking Wigan. Um... <laughs> Sorry, Wigan. Um... Oh, I keep referencing the camera. I'm turning into Jim from The Office now. I, I, I don't know what this is. Um... This is not, this is not what I normally do. Yeah, it is, shut up. Um, so yeah, I've been doing comedy for a long time. I've done the Edinburgh Festival twice, which I'm quite proud of, you know. I, I think that's a good thing. I'll always be proud of that. Thanks. That's the first time it's ever got applause. I weren't planning for that. Fucking hell. Um, yeah, I've done the Edinburgh Festival twice. That was good fun. I must admit, though, it, it does leave a bit of a dent in the bank balance. And to be honest, it pissed me off a little bit that I made more money outside my gigs than I did inside. And, these Japanese tourists thinking that my walking was some sort of experimental street theatre. <laughs> kind of gave me money. It's, uh, it, it wasn't a profitable idea, to be honest, to the point where my credit card company sent me a letter yesterday and uh, looked at the envelope and it said, outstanding balance. I thought, well, you've not fucking seen me walk lately. <laughs> And yeah, that, do you know the problem? I've been locked up for two years, so someone lets me out in front of people. I'm just going to sit here and talk. What are they going to do? Drag me off? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I enjoy sitting on this. This is quite nice, actually. I quite like this. I don't feel like I'm going to fall off it or anything. It's brilliant. I picked Fall Back Down by Rancid for myself. I thought it was accurate, you know. <laughs> I find I fall back down, the audience could pick me up again. <laughs> you need a fucking winch, is what you need these days. I've put on a lot of weight thanks to COVID. Um, it was a long two years and, and, you know, I'm still kind of suffering the effects. I did get it once and apparently I'm, I'm, I may suffer from long COVID. Uh, apparently if I get long COVID, I'll be short of breath and tired all the time. I'm not sure I'll tell the difference, to be honest with you, but there you are. Um, yeah, you know, it was tough being on my own. I live on my own now. I live in Manchester, uh, not far from here, actually, so I'll be home before you can, you know, stab me or anything. Um, I'll be home before Rushton hears about the video. <laughs> In fact, I probably won't, this is the comedy circuit, but yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> I always said I didn't want a gig again, I didn't expect to set fire to my own career on stage. But like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I love doing gigs like this though, this is, this is what's good about it, you know, otherwise I'd just be stuck at home all the time, you know. It's, I, I used to get anxiety when, when I went out, but now I've realised nothing can give me as much anxiety as getting my fucking electric bill, so there we go, I'm going to be alright. <laughs> Everything's all right now. Everything seems, you know, quite, quite placid in comparison to that. I've never done drugs before, but I'll tell you something. About six weeks into lockdown, if somebody was willing to give me a 12-pack of Oreos, I would have done anything they wanted. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not going not gonna to lie about that. That's why I've put the weight on, you know. It kind of, kind of is what it is, really. It's not though I have much mobility to start with. But um, I, do, you know, I do a lot of things now at home all the time. I've been watching a lot of uh, watching a lot of Netflix lately. I know everyone watches Netflix. I know this is a fairly common comedian trope, but uh, I'm getting a bit worried about the suggestions I'm getting. I've got, you know, they send you emails like, because you like such and such, you know, you might like this. I got an email yesterday that said, uh, because you watch Gilmore Girls, kill yourself. Um, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Wouldn't it be the first time? Uh, I've tried it. Anyway, um, I'm dying on stage now, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what else I was going to talk about really. I've just rattled through on, on caffeine and a dream. It's, uh, and I've, I've basically just talked absolute shit to you and, you and you like it and that's why I like it here. I love Blizzard, this is a great place to gig, you know. Um, I, I, find, I find the comedy circuit quite difficult, I get nervous sometimes. Uh, the best result I ever had at a gig was a stand innovation, so now you know what you've got to live up to. Um, admittedly, it was only when I went home that I thought they might have been being fucking sarcastic, but there's not much you could do about it at that point. Living in Manchester now, I, I've got to know a lot of different people, you know, I, I, I find myself quite at home in, in sort of alternative places, people that are a little bit different, people that, you know, kind of open my eyes to new ways of living and things like that. That's why I like this gig, you, you know, you never know who's going to be here, you never know who's going to be on, but it's always good fun, you know. 
Um, I, you know, I've, I've opened my house to a bunch of different stuff since I moved to Manchester. Uh, a few of my friends are like vegans now, which is fine. There's no jokes about vegans. I mean, I'm sick to death of hearing white comedians talk about vegans like it's fucking funny. It's not, you know, eat what the fuck you want. But uh, one of my other friends is, um, is a celiac um, intolerance to gluten. Another of my friends is a Siciliac and they break my heart and shake my confidence daily. Yeah. I never know if anyone's going to get that until about three seconds after I've said it and it's... It's the best laxative known to man. I'm sorry, Johnny, you're going to have to clean the stage up after this one. Um, sorry, how long have I done? Too long? I'm not the timing, but... Oh, okay. Well, that's good, I'll just stay here. <laughs> I, I am the Ken Dodd of comedy now that he's dead. I, I am him reincarnated. Um, except I'm not a scouse and I don't evade tax, but apart from that, um, everything's so, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, sorry. Um, there's been some talk about drugs tonight, we talked about weed earlier, um, there's been a few mentions of different bits of bats. Uh, I've never done drugs personally, I'm, I'm very white, I'm very sort of bland. Uh, I actually work in IT, which is why I really like the bright lights, because I don't have to look any of you in the eye. But, um, <laughs> I know them drugs because I'm kind of scared of the effects, you know, I, I heard that if I, uh, if I started smoking weed I'd get really paranoid and think the entire room was staring at me. <laughs> and uh, apparently if you, uh, if you move on to harder stuff, you start taking cocaine, you can find yourself jabbing on endlessly to a room full of people <laughs> who don't give a fuck what you're saying. Um, so that would be quite scary, wouldn't it? Anyway, if you did like me, I'd seek help immediately, but... Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm on Facebook, John Porter Comedy. Send me love, send me likes, send me affection, put a brick through my window, I don't care. I live in Montana House, you can't do much more damage to it. The scaffold will put them in it anywhere. Um, somebody knows Montana House over there, that's good, yeah. Maybe you saw the documentary. I certainly fucking did. Um, yeah, if you did like me, John Porter Comedy on Facebook. Um, yeah, as you probably guessed, I'm desperate for human interaction, so anything I'll do, follow me home, it's quite easy to do. Um, <laughs> You don't need much speed to do that. And I'll, uh, I guess I'll see you soon. Good night. <laughs>